Speedway Report is produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for Racers Reunion Radio. Well, Avant's revered short track series, it's a shell of its former self. Southern Modifieds have a midsummer driver shakeup, and the results were pretty big on Saturday night. And we'll look at dirt racers versus pavement racers. There's a big difference, and I'm not talking about the groove tires. All this <clears throat> and more. Welcome to Speedway Report, Monday, July the 16th, 2018, from the shores of Lake Norman in Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina. I'm Patrick Reynolds, and thank you for joining the fastest half hour in racing. Let's jump right into the Speedway Report victory lane lap, tell you who won what over this busy July weekend. The Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Tour was at the mile and a half in Kentucky. And unfortunately, the mile and a half style racing that we all know returned. Martin Truex Jr. won both early stages, took the checkered flag in the race, led all the laps just about. Uh, a lot of separation between the cars, but a good win for Truex and Furniture Row. Xfinity race on Friday night, a different animal altogether. Christopher Bell was your winner as he started shotgun on the field after a spin in qualifying. The truck race on Thursday evening. Nice home state win for Ben Rhodes, former guest on this show uh, several years ago when he was running uh, late models in the Pro Series East Tour. Speaking of NASCAR's K&N Pro Series East, they were up in Thompson, Connecticut, my old stomping grounds. The 5 8 mile on Saturday night for 100 laps. Tyler Ankrum was your winner there. Keep going north. The IndyCars were north of the border in Toronto on the street course up there. And Scott Dixon took the checkered flag. Championship contender and a championship leader as he extends the point lead. The Lucas Oil Late Models raced Friday night in Granite City, Illinois. Earl, Earl Pearson Jr. won the A Main and Saturday. Well, the Lucas Oil Late Models race where else? The Lucas Oil Speedway in Wheatland, Missouri. Get this, Scott Bloomquist won his, he's sitting down, 600th career victory. Dang, that's a lot. Uh, World of Outlaw late models were up in the great, what were they? What would be the Northwest, I guess? Midwest, Northwest? Grand Forks, North Dakota. You're a geography major. You tell me where it is. Friday night, Mike Marlar was your winner, and he took over the championship lead. And on Saturday, in Ogilvy, Minnesota, Chris Madden was your winner. Marlar continues to hold the championship lead. Now, the World of Outlaw Sprints were in Eldora, Rossburg, Ohio, at the Eldora Speedway. I said last year I might go to this this year, and I think this year I didn't go, so I'm going to have to go in 2019. Kings Royal Weekend at the big half-mile, high-banked, one of the premier short tracks in the entire nation. They're going to take center stage again two nights from now. But we began with last Thursday's running of a complete World of Outlaws show, the Joker's Wild, Shane Stewart, winner of the A-Main. Friday night, they contested the night before the King's Royal. The current king, Donnie Schatz, was your winner, and he liked that so much on Saturday. Schatz went ahead and collected his third straight King's Royal win and $50,000. That whole weekend sparked in uh, like a little undercurrent of a discussion in the thought process for me, as well as the pro the K and N Pro Series East race from Thompson. We're going to get to all that shortly because they all relate to one another. Up in Elko, Minnesota, on Saturday night, Gus Dean won the 250 lap ARCA feature. USAC Midgets had a busy week last Tuesday. They were in Meeker, Oklahoma, where Christopher Bell was your winner, taking some time off from his NASCAR duties. That's always cool to see. Uh, Wednesday in Kansas, Kevin Thomas Jr. took the checkered flag. In Fairbury, Nebraska was supposed to hold a doubleheader for Friday and Saturday nights. They got rained out on Friday, but did race Saturday, where Justin Grant won. And last night in Sweet Springs, Missouri, Logan Seavey, a nice, talented rookie, finally breaks through for victory lane for his first win. His last three finishes before the win, second, second, and second. When you're running like that, you're knocking on the door. It's just a matter of time before you visit Victory Lane. On Saturday night in Grandview, Pennsylvania, Doug Manmiller won the small block modified race uh, on the dirt. And yeah, the Cars Tour raced in Kingsport, Tennessee, a concrete jungle. 
Lane Riggs won the late model stock car race there, 125 laps. And the NASCAR Modifieds went 100 laps at the Bill McRae Stadium in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. James Savali won the race driving for Hillbilly Racing. Planted a lot of seeds for you guys in the victory lane lap. And we're going to carry over some of those now as I get on my rant for this week. Let's start with the, the, the NASCAR k and Pro Series East Tour. Uh, up in Thompson, Connecticut. <clears throat> now, Thompson's race was on Saturday night. 13 cars showed up for the 100-lap race. It was also a throwback night. They were trying to get teams to uh, wrap their cars and do paint jobs, and although I spend a whole lot of money, for a throwback-style race. I love how they do this at Darlington every year for the uh, Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Tour. Uh, not so much of the expense and the effort for the East Series cars, but they're all under cup banners anyway, or at least out of them are, which gets us into our topic. The East Series in itself, 13 cars at Thompson for the East Series. Let's do some history here. <clears throat> this was the former Bush North Series, and I remember back in the heyday, uh, in the 19, we'll call it the 1980s even, 1990s, 1970s even for that matter, when the when the Bush North cars were in town, especially in parts of southern New England, where I'm from, in Connecticut, when they ran header, uh, double headers with the Modifieds, that was a race not to be missed. They brought a full field of cars, had heat races, time trials, non-qualifiers races, a semi-feature, all kinds of good stuff. And here we are in 2018, and we draw basically a field of a heat race to go one, run 100 laps on the 5 8 high banked mile Thompson Speedway. 13 car, I've seen 13 cars, literally, I've seen heat races. I've seen heat races with more cars in them. And we went, uh, we, I didn't go, but some people did go up there for watch 13 cars go 100 laps in this so called big race. I uh, had one caution flag. Note that caution flags, neither here nor there, whether it's a qu good quality race or not. But what the heck happened? Where are we with Bush North, which was such a big deal uh, so many years ago? And now we've disintegrated this thing into the Pro Series East K&N sponsored series. There are so many people like to kid, kid around with it as the Kids and Nephews series because it's a bunch of rich family folks writing checks to cup car owners for a development series. So we've got this Pro East series. We've got a West series as well, the former Winston West series. And they were, you know, West series, let's clarify, a former Winston West series at the Pro Series West. The East series was the former Bush North series. When I was a kid growing up and being a big short track fan and watching both of these series, I didn't see a whole lot of West races, but I read about them. I did see a bunch of Bush North races, being a New Englander than I was. And we have morphed this thing, the East Series, into a development series. We call that about the trucks. We call that about the Xfinity Series. And the East Series is the same thing. And what the difference is, we'll lump Xfinity and trucks in there, is these used to be destinations and not stepping stones. People use them nowadays, really, uh, families with money or sponsorship, to get their kids seat time in longer distance races on pavement in heavy cars with fenders to try to launch them up NASCAR's proverbial ladder and get them to the higher reaches of the NASCAR stock car world. Their, their step out of this is the truck series or, or Xfinity, you know, climb the ladder and get up in there. Now, this has worked on that aspect for so, for, for many young drivers. We just talked about Ben Rhodes winning the truck series. He's come up through the ranks. There's guys in Xfinity. There's guys in Cup that have come through this series. The problem with Bush North getting 13 cars, and I don't know about the grandstand, is that there's nobody there to identify with. If you pull up the finishing order for 2018, which it's online, of the race at Thompson on Saturday night, and then pull up, I'll challenge you to go three, only three years back, 2015. And I, I haven't even looked, but I want to challenge you to see if there's any similar names, if there's anything in common. 
you cannot develop a fan base for any series in which these guys are just using that series as a stepping stone. And within two to three years, old daddy with the checkbook is either continuing to write the checks or launch the kid up to Xfinity series or just decided to stop spending money altogether and is out of the series. There's so many cars that are affiliated with Cup, the Cup series that there's very few people, teams at all, if they exist at all, that can really compete in this series for the purse that they run. They run for a short track purse. It's not high dollar stuff, which begs the question, why the wraps and why a throwback race? But when I was a kid growing up, there were some legends in the Bush North series. There was your Dave Dion, your J.P. Cabana, uh, the Dragon Brothers, Hector Leclerc, so many others were were it was this was a destination. These guys were older, established veterans. They weren't going anywhere. But I knew when I when I went to the Bush North tour, yeah, I knew who I was going to see. This this series had its own superstars, and we go now to the East series. Now I couldn't tell you anybody without looking it up who would be in this race. I know we're watching the development of some guys that hope to get to Cup someday. You know, several years ago, you would have seen, you know, a Joey Logano there, a Ben Rhodes there. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's good to see. But when they're gone in a year, two years, the race fan is not going to just keep returning and seeing a bunch of people they don't know. It doesn't work like that. Uh, you know, I was a big fan of J.P. Cabana growing up. He's from Canada. I thought his car looked cool. First saw him race when I was about 10 years old. I didn't know anything about him. I liked Roger LaPearl. He was cool. His, his you know, another Canadian, cool looking car. I'm 10 years old. What do I know? But throughout the years, when you went to the race, you saw these guys there and they were part of this series. This was a destination. These guys were not on their way up and they're gone in two years and names come in, name go, name, names go out. And that sparked a little bit of an idea. And I compared it, uh, well, we talked to, uh, let's talk about this. Sparked an idea, sparked a conversation only this afternoon with uh, Tim Sherrill up at WSIC Radio, Radio in Statesville, North Carolina. Race fan for decades. But we talked about the Xfinity Series and, uh, you know, racing locally, how they used to do it, Hickory and whatnot. And I thought about my points here for the Bush North Series versus the East Series. And the Bush Series itself with the Xfinity Series compared to today, today has the exact same issue. We are not developing any Jack Ingrams, any Sam Ards, we're not developing any Tommy Houston's, no Tommy Ellis's. We're not developing. The Xfinity series is full of people. If you are running up front, you either won a cup driver already, two, a guy like Christopher Bell, who will be a cup driver and is just spending a season or two in Xfinity and moving himself on up, or three, the series regulars, which are all 15th and 20th on back. A good dude like Jeremy Clements has his own team out of South Carolina, works on his own cars, won a race last year, but nobody really knows who he is because he's, you know, he's 15th on a good day most weeks. And I got nothing against Clements. I like him a lot, but I'm just pointing out the facts. He's racing against cup equipment fielded in the Xfinity Series. And the guys that are winning races, are winning championships, are running up front, they're the 20-year-olds who are on the development program that are skipping town in a year or two, and you won't know who they are. I challenge you, a Kentucky race this past Saturday night, let's or Friday night, excuse me. Let's do the same thing with 20, 2018 versus 2015. Go back three years. Is there anybody there who's a series regular that is really competing for a win? No, there isn't. The young guys that were competing for wins then were in cup equipment, Cup team equipment and just moving on through, not developing any fan base. The guys that are regulars, you got Morgan Shepherd, who's a starting part guy now, just paying his bills. Uh, you got a guy like Clements. You got a few others like that, but they're mid, they're mid pack runners. You know, you have uh, you know Justin Allgaier, who's with uh, Junior Motorsports, may or may not. He's floated in and out of Cup before. You, he may or may not see that but you're not developing the championship legendary statuses of, of that series. The Bush North doesn't do it. The Xfinity isn't doing it. Truck is, trucks are not doing it. Their own stars, their own identities, make them destinations and not development series. I don't think you should push these things as development series. They can be used as such, sure. Dale Jarrett came up through, 
developed, got a cup, cup ride, made a great cup career in the Hall of Fame. Jack Ingram, also a Hall of Famer. But goodness gracious, he wasn't going to cup, and he spent the, his whole career in the late model sportsman class. Won so many races, so many track titles. We're not developing anybody like that. The East Series is not developing the next Dave Dion or Bobby Dragon. The Xfinity Series is not developing the next Jack Ingram or Sam Hart. It's not happening. So we get ourselves, we go from that, we go from the East Race, and the, the points on that, where the former Bush North. No, not even close to as healthy as it was. You look at the Xfinity. If they went to Hickory again, which is a big conversation amongst longtime fans, they should go to Hickory again. They should go to Myrtle Beach. They should go to South Boston. If they did, would truly anybody go see them? Remember, the Sam Ards are not there. It's still the driver identification and who you're a fan of. I like the series. But are you really a fan of anybody? Do you even know who, who's in what car anymore? The drivers that are in, that are drivers that are out. You're just rotating a cast. No. it's it's. I have no interest in it. I don't know if I literally would go because would I care? I'm not sure if I would. Which brings us, we'll, we'll stay on the short track road and how all these dominoes uh, are, are connected here and knocking each other down. We just had the King's Royal at Eldora. 13 cars, I told you, at Thompson's East Race on Saturday night. Eldora's Sprint Cars. Thursday night, 46. Friday night, 51. Saturday night, 51. This kind of starts their month of money. They paid $50,000 to win the A-Main on Saturday night at the King's Royal. Uh, begins their month of money. In August, they're, they're going to Knoxville, Iowa, in about a week for the Nationals. That pays $150,000 to the winner. Eldora had a 50-50 on Saturday night. They buy the tickets. They split the money. One of the fans wins. The other half goes to the uh, track point fund. They had over $50,000 for a winning fan on Saturday night with their 50-50. And it was a, a, pan from, a fan from central Pennsylvania. You talk about some heavy sprint car country. Naturally, that... Uh, Sparked some good Pennsylvania posse battles and online media. Crashed with the Eldora World of Outlaw folks. But you have Eldora in the World of Outlaws, an extremely healthy, healthy short track series. Why? Because it's a destination. You have drivers in there every week that you're going to see. I know I'm going to uh, see Shane Stewart there every week. You know, I'm going to see Donnie Schatz there every week, year after year. They have champions. They've developed regular fan bases, and it takes years to do. You could say the same thing about dirt late models with the World of Outlaws, uh, late models, and the Lucas Oil uh, Series late models. This happens, and these drivers stay there. They make careers out of it. And that's a you know that's where they're going to race. That's where they're going to win, make the money, make their living. There's crew guys making a living. There's guys building cars, making a living. They're destinations. They're not development series. Xfinity, trucks. Pro Series East and West. You'd think with the power of NASCAR behind them, for goodness sakes, World of Outlaws does a better job on their short track series than NASCAR does with their heavy muscle and their heavy budget. Nobody has more money than NASCAR. Nobody in American auto racing. It just doesn't happen. It's it, it, And the World of Outlaws outdo them. Lucas Oil Late Models outdo them. World of Outlaws do as well. Uh, I... I, it boggles the mind on NASCAR lets these short track series twist in the wind and just disintegrate for the sake of allowing cup teams to spend more money in a lower in a lower series. And we come up to a pet peeve of mine that happens every year uh, with Eldora's uh, Kings Royal this past Saturday. This Wednesday, two nights from now, the trucks are there, uh, which I love the fact that the trucks are there. Never was a fan of segmented racing. I've been over that. That's a dead horse on this show. However, Wednesday night at Eldora and the professional NASCAR media is doing their usual poor job of educating fans, uh, you know, with their quotes on dirt. Uh, you'll see so many times of how NASCAR only races on dirt once a year. No, the last time NASCAR raced on dirt, I gave the results on it in the Victory Lane Lab. Doug Manmiller won at Grandview, Pennsylvania on Saturday night. NASCAR sanctioned weekly short track, small block modified track. NASCAR, NASCAR, NASCAR. 
They were there. They're there every Saturday night, Grandview PA. NASCAR races on dirt every single week, but the NASCAR media does not do justice to the short tracks or anything below the three touring national series. Hence part of the problem with the East series and only getting 13 cars at Thompson and it's a development series and not a destination. NASCAR is its own worst enemy when it comes to this stuff. And you've got independent uh, entities like the world of outlaws showing them how it's done. Shame on you, NASCAR. You took a once Royal glorious series like the East series. That was the Bush North series or the Xfinity series, which was the Bush series. And you don't let heroes develop there anymore. You don't let them stay. There's nothing there. It's uh, totally, uh, let's take daddy's money for all he can while we, we squeeze it, squeeze the juice out of the orange from a 16-year-old. And by the time he hits 24 years old, he hasn't made it to cup. He's washed up. Dad is tired of spending money. But the industry made it off uh, dad's big checkbook. It's a shame. I can't wait to see my next dirt sprint car race. And like I said, in the modifieds, I'm going to jump from short tracks. I want to mention in the modifieds, uh, read Saturday morning that uh, George Brunholzel III was no longer driving the Hillbilly Racing Modified. Uh, GB3, best wishes to you, my friend, wherever your endeavors take you. Uh, good dude, longtime historic racing family in the Modifieds. James Savali was scheduled to drive the secondary car at Bowman Gray Stadium on Saturday night. Got bumped up to the primary with GB3 not racing the car anymore. Lo and behold, Savali wins the 100-lap Modified race on Saturday night. Good for Savali, good for the Hills, and I wish GB3 all the luck in the world with wherever he winds up. In between our broadcasts, keep up on the world of auto racing with SpeedwayReport.com. This broadcast and our past shows are uploaded on the site. We also have a bunch of racing articles to read. Yeah, yeah, the little 500 Bobby Santos story. I made progress on it this week. It's coming. I'll let you know. Don't worry about it. Love you guys anyway. Uploads of this broadcast and our past episodes are on uh, the Facebook with Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds and Racers Reunion, both pages, as Joe Vagnone likes to call it, on the book, Facebook. Uh, we're on Twitter at Speedway Report and at Speedway Pat. We're in the forum on racersreunion.com. And as I mentioned, my website, speedwayreport.com. If you are connected to me on Google+, LinkedIn, and Facebook, the videos are there, as well as the Speedway Report YouTube channel. Big thanks to everyone on our Facebook Live feed for joining the conversation during the show tonight. I will get back to you guys in a little bit. Always go see a race at a track near you. Our grassroots ovals, drag strips, and road courses are the backbone and the foundation of the auto racing world. I want to thank all of the military past and present for the freedoms we enjoy as Americans in our daily life, including the simple things like bench racing right here on, on Monday night. Freedom is not free, and a veteran paid that bill for us. To all of the men and women who are defending freedom and watching Speedway Report, take care of yourselves and come home soon. A special salute to the teachers, school staff, firefighters, police officers, and paramedics in our own communities. They are quiet and modest heroes every single day. God bless and thank you. You have been watching Speedway Report from the shores of Lake Norman and Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina. Please like our Facebook page, Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds, and follow me on Twitter at Speedway Pat. On the Drag Racing List Facebook page next is Racing and Rocking with DragList.com. You can join BP, JB, and BS for your drag racing news and some really cool music. So when we're done here, head on over to Drag Racing List on Facebook. We will be back here on Facebook Live next week, Monday, July 23rd, where they look at New Hampshire's busy NASCAR weekend of Cup, Xfinity, Modifieds, and the East Series. I know I got the schedule wrong last week in my head. I had New Hampshire... It was Kentucky, I know. I'm sorry. Uh, New Hampshire next week, big uh, NASCAR quadruple header. NHRA will be in Denver, Colorado. Formula One will be in Hockenheim. We'll talk about short tracks and a whole lot more. Thank you all for joining us. I will see you all next time.